My name is Gary Bredo, and I'm a documentary filmmaker and an entrepreneur. The economy is in less than perfect shape, and when the jobs go away, there's nothing left to do but get up and get creative. And there are people all over America doing just that. It's estimated that up to 85% of new businesses fail, so I'm going coast to coast to hear the personal stories of the people who beat the odds and started a successful business from the ground up. This is Startup. The entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well. In Walsh College's business launch entrepreneurial community, consultants provide advice to aspiring business starters. More information available online. The Chevrolet Volt, an everyday electric car with gas for longer trips. The nature of things to come. Oh, Chevrolet, find new roads. American Express is proud to support Startup and the millions of small businesses that put in the hard work to be open for business in neighborhoods across the country. I'm on 39th Street in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and we're going to go talk to Lori and Mary Beth, who created Yo Bro, a pair of little dudes. Now these two moms had a lot on their plate, with Mary Beth being a full-time architect and Lori a marketing manager. But their passion for fashion inspired them to start a new hip youth clothing line. Let's go talk to them. The children's clothing industry has experienced steady growth over the last five years, but the high cost of establishing and maintaining a profitable national brand is a major barrier of entry for new businesses looking for market share. In an industry where the top four players account for 67.3% of revenue, Mary Beth and Lori, creators of Yobro, are focused on a niche category specific to young boys' apparel, an area that they have found to be lacking throughout big box retailers. Hi, I'm Mary Beth Mahoney. And I'm Lori Sipes. We're with Yobro Apparel in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And our mission is to bring cool clothes to little dudes. So thanks a lot for talking with me today. I want to hear a little bit about both of you guys personally. You guys are both moms. I have two little boys, four and two, okay. and they're wild little toddlers, little men. <laughs> My oldest is eight, and then the next is six. Watching little boys, they're a lot more complex than I think people give them credit for, and they um, are just have this spirit and energy that is just crazy and scary, and they, they were my inspiration. Um, the things that they're interested in, the animals, nature, science, army, whatever it is, they yeah. were our inspiration. I was shopping for my sons and I just found it really frustrating. I would go into stores and the girls department was three times as big and the boys department was in the corner and everything was navy and heather gray and right. you know I was like oh can we get a different color and the graphics to me just seemed redundant or silly or way sure. too mature. So one day I just said I'm just gonna make them some t-shirts. I know George, um, I can, I have a wholesale account. So I said why don't I just do this. I knew that there was no way I could move forward if I didn't have someone like George to work with. Um, of course, yeah. This kind of project takes a lot more patience, and I also knew I needed a lot of advice and input from the printer, and not many printers want to deal with these kind of orders. So I, I came to George and said, hey, I got an idea. You know, are you up for this? And so that's kind of how I presented it to him, and you know, he decided to go with it. If you're doing the whole thing from getting the garments, printing them, and delivering them, that's called custom printing. Got it. If someone ships you garments and you're just doing the printing, that's called contract printing. And that's what we do for Mary Beth. She okay, so you're buying the garments. So I, yeah, we, I went to trade shows, sourced, found where we wanted it. And then when I order it, they ship it directly to George. The U.S. children's apparel and accessory market reached $37 billion in 2012. Where, where are we right now? What do, what, do, what do you do in this room here? This is basically the hub of the online portion of our business. Okay. So this 12 by 15 room is basically inventory, uh, packaging, shipping, labels, everything. Basically, the order comes off the computer. I come in here and I process the order. Everything's pretty bare bones. Um, yeah. Good old rubber stamp, you know. Um, it's a very ground up, hands on business. Absolutely. We um, we started small in this economy. We just thought it was kind of smart, and we wanted to do as much ourselves to save as much money as we could. Um, so for ten bucks, we got a rubber stamp. Six bucks got ink, and that does our bags at the retail store. It does the tags for the product. Um, we have cloth bags that we put onesies in and gifts in. So that rubber stamp is like. 
everything. Wow. The <laughs> rubber no stamp. Business. Who knew? Who knew? You're here with kids. How do you how do you do it? Because they have to be coming in the room and yelling yeah. and pulling on your shirt and saying, I want this, I want that. Yeah, well there was no choice. Um, so we had to locate it here. I do have a door, it does not lock. Um, <laughs> Time to change that. Yeah. During the design process, my boys were integral. I would do artwork and they'd come in the room while I was working. And my first instinct was, come on, go, give me five more minutes. But then they started looking at it Oh my gosh, I like that one. I want the coyote. I want the tank. And that's when I realized they Market are the research. people that should be critiquing the artwork. Yeah. And um, the themes were based on things that they liked. So it's actually been great being here because yeah. having the boys here, I get their feedback. And you know, it's... you have your you have a constant access to your target demographic. Yeah. Women-owned businesses account for over thirty percent of all U.S. businesses. Is, is a t-shirt company a, a good idea? Is it profitable? I mean, is, is, <laughs> it, is it because you know that there's gonna be people watching this show that say, God, I always wanted to start a whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, what it, would you say to those people? I, I would say if you'd probably talk to our spouses as to whether or not it's <laughs> profitable or not. The, <laughs> yeah. the, you know, the thing is, is everybody has an idea mm -hmm. and some of them are really pretty good, but it, it takes somebody like Mary Beth to take the next step to actually take the idea and run with it. And this is where the rubber meets the road. This yep. is real grassroots, you know, American product. We worked on it for a year before we launched because it was meeting late at night when the kids are in bed. I drive into the city, she'd drive out to me. Sure. And it was, you know, finding this balance. So if we didn't have kids, we probably would have gotten up and going a lot faster. Right, yeah. So to all the moms out there that have a career or they're just stay-at-home moms, which is sometimes triple the work, you know, yeah. uh, and they have an idea, they want to do something. I want to hear your advice. You shouldn't hold off on um, following your dreams because right. you can make it work. Find if, a way, find time. Find a way, find time. I mean, you have to stay up late and love coffee maybe a little bit, but. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to talk to me today. I'm really excited to see what you're going to do in the future. I think it's going to be an inspiration to not only just business people around America, but definitely moms that are in a similar situation that just really want to chase their dreams. So thanks for being an inspiration. Thanks for coming. So although being a mom is a full-time job, there's always time in the day to chase your dreams. And you never know. It could end up being a full-time job or even a global success. The end result all depends on you. For more information, log on to our website and click the link for Yobro. What what uh what do you call organic food? What did they call organic food in 1950? No idea. Food. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. American Express is proud to support startup and the millions of small businesses that put in the hard work to be open for business in neighborhoods across the country. The Chevrolet Volt, an everyday electric car with gas for longer trips. The nature of things to come. Oh, Chevrolet, find new roads. The entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well. In Walsh College's business launch entrepreneurial community, consultants provide advice to aspiring business starters. More information available online.